In my video looking at Black Widow and Winter Soldier's costumes in Marvel's Avengers, I briefly mentioned their gameplay. Since then, I've been itching to elaborate on that. Now let's get started. First, we'll be taking a look at Black Widow. Despite not really liking Black Widow as a character, I was actually looking forward to playing as her. I'm a huge fan of the Devil May Cry games, so getting to play as another character who uses a mix of melee moves and twin pistols sounded like it could be a good time. But it really wasn't. Widow's melee stuff is somewhat flawed, but my largest issue lies with her long-ranged weapons. She actually doesn't have different weapons, she only has her default pistols that she augments with different attachments. I'm not a firearms expert, but I don't think putting different things on top of your gun will change its rate of fire, but whatever. These three modes are standard, full auto, and high impact. So basically, normal pistols, fast pistols, and one slow pistol. I can't be the only one that finds this incredibly boring, right? Compounding on that is the issue of the ammo limitation. All of Black Widow's guns have their own ammo count that you must manually reload to continue firing. I really, really don't like how this works. First, let's dispel the notion that this is more realistic, because it's not. Reloading every now and then isn't realistic if she has an infinite amount of reloads that you never have to replenish. Where is she keeping her infinite amount of fully stocked magazines? Yeah, that's right. Checkmate, realism fans. The real issue this brings is that it's a bit bothersome to reload every now and then before you can get back to playing the game. Other characters are free to use their ranged weapons as much as they want, with no need to reload. While it could be argued that it's balanced out by Widow having a higher rate of fire and faster projectiles, I would disagree. Widow's fire rate and projectile speed is higher, that's true. However, I disagree that the need to reload is the correct way to balance that out, especially since it is very easy to work around it. Every time you switch weapon types with Widow, she goes into the reload animation for the next weapon. So, this kind of sucks since you can't quickly switch between weapons to continuously fire, like in a lot of shooter games. But like I said, you can work around it. If you switch weapons while performing another action, like an attack, dodge, or takedown, then the reload animation will be skipped. You can also skip the reload animation just by aiming, which is kind of stupid. You can do this to get to other weapons faster, but you can also do this to reload your current weapon without going through the reload animation. Some may look at this and think that this is a good thing, since it adds depth to the gameplay. However, I don't think that's the case. I don't think this adds depth, because it's easy to do. Essentially, once you learn that it's possible, you can do it no problem. More importantly than that though, I think it's unnecessary. I don't think you should have to do this extra step to switch weapons quickly. The question you're probably asking right now is, Okay, smart guy, if it's so bad, how would you do it, huh? Well, thanks for asking. I would change two major parts of Black Widow's weapons in order to make things more fun. The first is changing the weapons themselves. The pistols can stay, but I'd have her two alternate weapons be her bracelet stingers and a sniper rifle. Her bracelet dart things are a pretty important part of Black Widow's toolset, and I think it's a shame that it's relegated entirely to her assault heroic. Imagine if throwing Captain America's shield or Thor's hammer was relegated entirely to a super move tied to a cooldown. So I'd have her darts take the role of her rapid fire pistols, not in fire rate, but in functionality, as these would primarily inflict stun damage. Then there's a sniper rifle, which would replace the high impact round. Black Widow is a spy and an assassin, so I think this would be an extremely fitting weapon. Also, it'd be cool if it had a zoom-in feature when looking through the lens so you can pick off faraway targets. It seems like this was actually considered for the game, as there is a piece of concept art showing Black Widow with the sniper rifle. Unfortunately, this didn't make it in. The next major change I would make is to remove the ammo count and replace it with a recharge system. Every gun would essentially have an empty meter that would fill up as you fire it, and if you stop firing, then the meter will deplete back to its starting position independently of your actions. If you fully fill the meter, then the gun will overheat, and you'll have to slowly wait for the meter to fully deplete until you can fire again. The key thing here is that each weapon has their own recharge meters and deplete and refill independently of each other. This would then incentivize players to quickly switch between the three weapons to avoid overheating. Additionally, you'd be able to engage in melee combat while waiting for your guns to recharge, so you'd always be doing something. You'd never be forced to sit there and awkwardly wait for a reload animation to finish. Last thing I want to mention in regard to her guns is that when playing as Black Widow, her full auto pistols are the default option, which is odd. No other character has their stun focus weapon as their default weapon. Earlier, I mentioned that Black Widow's melee combat was somewhat lacking. What I was really referring to was Black Widow's aerial combat. Her grapple hook serves as both her counter ability and a way to close distance between enemies. 
So by using this, her dive kick aerial light attack that pops her back in the air when you hit an enemy, and her aerial heavy attack, you can stay in the air for a long time and do some lengthy air combos on enemies. Except you can't, actually, because Black Widow does not have an air dodge. If an attack is coming your way while you're in the air, there is nothing you can do about it. So you can't actually go combo mad in the air because you'd be putting yourself in way more danger than you would be on the ground. This isn't a problem unique to Black Widow, as only the Thors, Iron Man, and Spider-Man have air dodges. It is, however, a far more apparent problem with her, because it is so easy to do aerial combos with her. It's like she was built with that in mind, but the developers didn't fully commit to it for some reason. Let's just do some quick comparisons. Spider-Man can pull himself towards enemies using his webs, in a similar way to what Black Widow does with her grapple hook but he can still dodge while in the air, and his web swinging ability allows to reposition himself while airborne. So in terms of aerial combat, Spider-Man is practically a straight upgrade of Black Widow. Now, you might be thinking, wait a sec, I thought Spider-Man sucked donkey nuts in Avengers. Yes, he does. I won't discuss why Spider-Man sucks because it's not relevant and it's a whole nother topic of discussion, but the point is, at least when it comes to his aerial capabilities, he is better than Black Widow. There are only two real reasons I can think of as to why Black Widow wasn't given an air dodge. The first is that it's not realistic, and the second is that it would make it too easy for her to stay in the air. The first one should be debunked by the very simple fact that this is a superhero video game, so realism should not be a high priority. The second point is debunked by Spider-Man's very existence, as he is literally capable of doing what Black Widow should be able to do. The flyers as well can stay in the air indefinitely, so I really don't see why it would be an issue if Black Widow could stay in the air for a little bit longer. But to address both of these concerns at once, I think the solution is quite simple. Give her an air dodge that doesn't cancel gravity. Bayonetta's dodge works like this, so she moves down towards the ground as she dodges. This would be more realistic, and it wouldn't keep her airborne. And hey, an air dodge that moves you closer to the ground is better than no air dodge at all. The last thing I want to mention about Black Widow's gameplay is not really a problem, but more of an oddity. If Black Widow jumps while sprinting, she'll jump a lot further and faster than normal, allowing her to clear large distances in a short time and jump over wide chasms. This is fine. The issue I have is that this should be a standard for all the non-flying characters. But it's not. Captain America, Black Panther, and Spider-Man, characters that should be physically stronger than Black Widow, don't have this. Neither do Hawkeye and Winter Soldier. Kate Bishop does, though. Favoritism much? To put all this together, I don't like her range weapons because I don't think there's a lot of variety. I don't like the ammo system since it slows down combat and can be basically ignored entirely. And her aerial combat is severely stilted since she can't defend herself while in the air. I'd say that Black Widow's gameplay in Avengers is fine if you play exactly how the game wants you to and never deviate from that. This goes for many of the other characters in this game, but I think Widow stands out because it's so clear to me how the character could have been a lot better. Now let's move on to Winter Soldier, a character I found to be a lot more fun. I say that Winter Soldier is fun for two reasons. The first is that he's fun for the same reason that modding a gun into Skyrim would be fun. Which is to say that it's fun to shoot things and see how long you can go without engaging in the game's actual mechanics. The second reason he's fun is that he is broken as hell. There's a mission type in this game called the Heroic Gauntlet, which is a mission chain that requires you to complete four missions in a row that are several floors of difficult enemies with overshields and regenerating health. The only character I've managed to complete this with is Winter Soldier. I want to break down why he's busted, because I think it's really funny. So the first thing is that Winter Soldier's ultimate heroic marks enemies for assassination, as noted by this symbol above the enemy's head. Once an enemy is marked like this, you can do a takedown on them without having to stun them. Once you do this, the mark is used up and goes away. This alone is a pretty big deal, since takedowns do big damage on enemies and heal you a little but it gets crazier. Once you get to level 15, you can select this upgrade in the Mastery Skill tab, which makes takedowns drop Heroic Orbs. Heroic Orbs regenerate your Heroic Meters, so you can activate Winter Soldier's ultimate ability, do a ton of takedowns, and get a lot of your Heroic abilities recharged with all the Heroic Orbs you dropped. But there's more. This upgrade for the Assault Heroic marks enemies that are hit by it. Keep in mind, Winter Soldier's Assault Heroic has two charges, so you can use it twice in a row to mark a ton of enemies. Then there's this upgrade for his intrinsic ability. See, blocking attacks with Winter Soldier fills up his intrinsic bar. Once it's full, you can cash it out to enable a damage reduction buff that is kind of pointless since you shouldn't be getting hit if you're playing Winter Soldier correctly. But when the buff is activated, it creates this shockwave that pushes enemies back. This is where that upgrade I mentioned comes in. The upgrade causes the shockwave to mark enemies that are hit by it. Putting this all together, there are three ways to mark enemies for assassination. Once they're marked, you can do takedowns on them, which deals damage and recharges your heroics. Then you can use your heroic 
heroics to deal more damage and mark enemies again. So you're in this constant cycle of takedowns and heroic moves, both of which make you invincible while you're doing them, by the way. And it's... it's insane. Maybe other characters can do something similar, recharging their heroics by getting enemies to spawn heroic orbs, but it is so much easier to do this with Winter Soldier. And we're not even done. There's an upgrade for Winter Soldier's ultimate heroic that removes his ammo limit while it's active, allowing you to fire without restraint for 30 seconds. And with all the heroic orbs you'll be getting from takedowns, you can have the ultimate ability recharge before it ends, or shortly before it ends. So if you play it right, you can have infinite ammo pretty much the entire time. The last nutso thing about Winter Soldier's gameplay is that it's really easy to trigger the battery effect with him. So if you don't know what that is, let me explain. In this game, there are eight different status effects split across two different groups, hot and cold, or positive and negative. I don't actually know which are the official terms. But if you apply an effect from one group and then apply an effect from the opposite group, you'll trigger the battery effect, which causes the damage of the attack to double. As you can imagine, that's pretty strong. And it is so easy to do this with Winter Soldier. An upgrade for his support heroic applies the shock status to the enemies affected by the explosion the ability creates. Shock is a cold status, so now all you have to do is hit these enemies with a hot status to inflict massive damage. I have Plasma, a hot status, on my bullets for Winter Soldier, so I can just unload on dudes after activating the support heroic. If you activate the ultimate heroic beforehand with the unlimited ammo upgrade, then you can really go to town on enemies. Those are the best things about Winter Soldier's gameplay, but I want to talk about his gear a bit too, because I think he has better gear than a lot of the other characters. I've got some pretty interesting perks that actually change how Winter Soldier plays. One of them extends the duration of his ultimate heroic by two seconds each time I defeat an enemy while it's active. Another perk I have marks enemies when I do a perfect dodge on them. Maybe hardcore players of this game will disagree with me and say that these perks are bad because they don't jack up my damage and let me one-shot bosses by dealing 50 million gigafarts of damage or whatever, but I think these perks are good because they're interesting. Most of the other perks in this game are passive buffs that don't really change how combat works. I say Winter Soldier is a bit of a break from that, which makes sense since he was the final character release. So his gear stands as the final endpoint of these developers' work. It's possible that I got lucky with Winter Soldier, and happened to get the good gear for him, but I don't think so. Let me explain by comparing him to the character I've played for far longer, Iron Man. I have a ton of exotic pieces for Iron Man, and the only perk he has that I consider interesting is this one that makes his energy barrier electrocute nearby enemies. Most of the other stuff is just increased damage of missiles, increased damage of Hulkbuster. Another thing is how their status on ranged moves work. Iron Man and Winter Soldier have three different ranged attacks that are similar in their utility. Repulsors and 3 round bursts have decent damage and low stun, laser and full auto have a high fire rate, low damage, and high stun, missiles and grenades deal high damage, have an area of effect that can damage multiple enemies, and push enemies away. With Iron Man's gear, all three of his range moves are separate, so gear perks that apply status only apply to one weapon at a time. Winter Soldier doesn't do the same. Burst Fire and Full Auto are grouped together, with only grenades being separate. So for Iron Man, having a status effect on Repulsor and Laser, which is what I have, takes up two perk slots. But having status on the equivalent weapons for Winter Soldier only takes up one perk, leaving two other slots to have different and more interesting perks. This also means that it only takes two perks to give all of Winter Soldier's range attacks a status, something that would take up all three slots for Iron Man. In fact, I have two gear pieces for Winter Soldier that give all his ranged attacks status, and have a potentiator perk for that status. The potentiator allows the status to be applied even faster, so these pieces allow for a level of status application that Iron Man simply cannot match. There is no equivalent piece for Iron Man that does what these pieces do, or at the very least, I've never found it. I do have some complaints, although they're generally pretty minor. Yes, a lot of Winter Soldier's moves are reused from Captain America. This honestly isn't a huge deal. A lot of Cap's melee attacks are pretty basic moves that really anyone could pull off, so I personally don't take issue with it. The only animation that I think stands out because of how awkward it looks on this character is his blocking while running animation. For Captain America, this made sense since he was running with his shield, and while they try to justify it with Winter Soldier using his metal arm to protect himself, it still doesn't look right. The biggest issue I have with Winter Soldier's gameplay is that the sound effect for his gunfire is awful. This is not what a firearm sounds like, it sounds like a pellet gun. Just listen to this. Alright, now listen to what a gun should sound like. Do you see the difference? 
I guess his rifle is supposed to have a silencer on it, but still, it's not a very satisfying sound. Something that just confuses me about Winter Soldier is that he has a grapple hook gadget. They went out of their way to model a separate tool for him to use when he grapples to things. Why? Black Widow's grapple hook just shoots out of her hands, even though it's supposed to be coming out of her bracelet things, but they didn't really do it right. They could have just done that for Winter Soldier and say that his metal arm has a grapple hook built into it. Mirror the animation if it's on the wrong arm and boom, you're done. There's no need to make a separate model for a separate gadget to do this. The last thing is that he has an emote that is a reference to a moment from the Winter Soldier movie where he spins his arm around to reboot it. Now I gotta tell you, as a huge turbo nerd, I sorta did this motion a lot after seeing the movie since I thought it looked super cool, but I don't think they recreated it correctly in this game. The focus of the motion should be on the downward swing, but instead most of the force is placed into the upward swing, and the animation in general is kinda limp, so... Yeah, I don't think it looks right. And that's all. Overall, I'd say Winter Soldier is actually a good example of making an interesting character out of scraps from some of the others. And that's it for this video. This was initially written and recorded shortly after the release of my video on Black Widow and Winter Soldier's costumes, but I lost interest in it after that. I finished it up as a way to have some filler content before the release of my next video, which will be on Miles' costumes in Spider-Man 2. So don't worry, that video is still coming. If you like this video, then, you know, like, comment, subscribe, all that, but also, let me know if you like this kind of video, because if you do, then I'll do another one breaking down Spider-Man in Avengers and examining exactly why he's not that fun to play as. And now I'm done jabbering. See you next time!